the health watch for years, years and years. Pediatricians have been warning about the dangers of infant walkers, but now new numbers on injuries uh, have the American Academy of Pediatrics repeating its call to completely ban sales of the walkers. And Dr. Malika Marshall is here, and Doctor, I've already been shamed now <laughs> in the studio. I'm pretty sure I put both of my kids in walkers really? on occasion. I wouldn't put them upstairs or anything, but okay. You know, I'm if, just if surprised. They have them in the playroom, I would put. Them A lot in. of people still use them. I guess yes, they do. Yeah. They're certainly not as popular as they once were, but they are found in a number of households still, like Liam's. <laughs> and um, the study in pediatrics found that between 1990 and 2014, more than 230,000 kids under the age of 15 months ended up in the emergency room with an injury related to baby or infant walkers. Most of them fell down the stairs. Most of them ended up hurting their head or their neck. There were some babies who <laughs> died from them. So we pediatricians are just saying it's not worth it, you know. Um, it gives parents a false sense of security. They think, oh, well, it gets my baby moving around in a safe Maybe environment. Maybe go do some air, you know. Or they think, you know, I would love to see my nine-month-old wandering around the yeah. kitchen, but that's not necessarily a good idea. You don't want them to be able to reach the stove. I mean, there are other ways they can hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. Plus, they don't actually help babies walk any faster. If anything, they might actually delay motor development. So it's better just to err on the side of caution yeah. and not use them at all. Did have a niece that went down the stairs. Uh, I would definitely top floor. I can't do it about this. Yeah, it was basement. We're not basement stairs. You. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Scientists are also testing something really cool. It could help millions of Americans who experience hair loss. It is a light-based wearable device that could regrow hair. And this sounds really intriguing. Hmm. So it's still in the very preliminary stages, but the researchers say there is prior data to suggest that lasers, in particular red light, can stimulate hair follicles. Mm. So scientists developed a chip, which is the size of a postage stamp, that contains 900 micro, tiny, tiny little LEDs that emit light. And so they tested it on mice who had, sh they've shaved their backs, and they treated them 15 minutes a day for 20 days, and they found that those mice regrew hair faster and longer than mice that were injected with mm. a common medication used to treat baldness mm. or mice that weren't treated at all. Mm. So, you know, this still needs to be tested in humans, but this is kind of a novel, interesting, innovative way to treat the problem. So kind of a scalp cap that would have light? Perhaps. I mean, right now they're just doing the tiny little chip on Great. the tiny little mouse, but who knows what Ooh. it could end up being. Some very confident mice walking around. <laughs> it's true, it's true. But good. my back hair. Who was shaving the backs of the little mice? <laughs> I think they probably had, they had an intern, uh, some unpaid employee. <laughs> thank you, Doc. This went somewhere I didn't expect to go. Doctor, thank you.